the 12th principle of green chemistry, shown here, substances in the form of a substance used in a chemical process should be chosen to minimize the potential for accidents, chemical accidents, including releases, explosions, and fires. Okay. Um, we've talked a lot about the nature of feedstocks, the nature of energy, the nature of waste, um, but not so much about accidents. And yet, uh, accidents are kind of consequential. Um, this is one of the, uh, the, the worst accidents um, in, certainly in U.S. history. Texas City, Texas. So it was uh, shipping, uh, shipping ammonium nitrate. Uh, and you have a giant barge sitting on the, on the harbor of uh, Texas City, Texas, docked. And uh, ammonium nitrate is, is uh, fine powder. And the, the one thing you don't want is to, to have that powder turn to dust. So there's, there's a lot of ways to, to cover or contain that powder um, in order to make sure you don't get dust. One of the things that you could contain and coat that, that powder with is, do you happen to know this? It's wax. You could c cover and contain it with wax. But you don't want to do that. And nobody has ever done that again since Texas City, Texas. Because pretty, it's a pretty good uh, first approximation to say there was no Texas City, Texas uh, on April 17th. Um, almost 600 killed, 3,500 injured uh, when this, this blew up, this explosion uh, took place. We also had, again, uh, ammonium nitrate explosion. This is in Toulouse, France. Uh, 3.4 on the Richter scale. Uh, over 2,000 injured, 30 killed, 800 plus hospitalized in Toulouse, France. Um, 27,000 housing units. Okay. This was uh, Morton International, the, the subsidiary of the Morton Salt uh, commercial. Just in case you don't think it can happen in Manhattan, this happened about 10 years ago uh, uh, in Manhattan. This is. Uh, this was waste disposed. This one is, a, is it a paper mill? Um, so different kinds of reactive hazards. Um, this is chemical processing in Montana. This is first chemical. This was only minor injuries, but of course the plant was uh, itself ruined. Specialty plastics. So we've got paper, we've got plastics, we've got um, uh, the one in Manhattan I think was printing. Um, insulation products. This was, uh, again, about 10 years ago, combustion explosion, repackaging. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about Love Canal. Who knows about Love Canal? Anybody? I feel like I'm almost in a history lesson, uh, but don't consider this a history lesson because we're going to see that this is all too relevant today. Love Canal, neighborhood in upstate New York. Back in 1953, Hooker Chemicals sold the plot of land for a dollar to the town after dumping 21,000 tons of toxic waste into this, this area. It took until the 70s, until all of the miscarriages, the, the neurotoxic effect, and the cancers came to light. Uh, and it was declared an ecological disaster area, essentially, and the federal government had to locate, relocate 800 families. They had to essentially buy the town uh, because it was an environmental disaster area. Okay. Times Beach, Times Beach, Missouri. This is the early 80s. So a chemical company got a waste hauler and said, we want you to get rid of our waste. And we paid them $3,000 for a truckload to get rid of their hazardous waste. And they decided, well, for dust control, we're gonna spray this hazardous waste on the dusty roads. And this happened to be an area that's a little bit uh, flood prone. Uh, flood prone, gets into the drinking water. Dioxin levels are, were 2,000 times higher than that found in Agent Orange, a uh, chemical warfare agent. 
Um, again, cancers, miscarriages, neurotoxic effects, and in 1983, the, uh, the government had to purchase the town for $32 million. The entire town and everybody was essentially an environmental refugee. The Cuyahoga River. The Cuyahoga River is, uh, uh, is anybody from Ohio-ish? <laughs> um, so the Cuyahoga River doesn't look like this anymore, luckily. But in, uh, in 1969, it burst into flames. It's not the first time it burst into flames. It burst into flames a lot. But in 1969, a picture was taken and made the cover of, of Life magazine, which was big at the time. And, and people said, you know, we don't want our rivers bursting into flames. Uh, that, that's, that's bad. Uh, and so my favorite slogan about um, the Cuyahoga River is that uh, somebody said, in the Cuyahoga, you don't, if you fall in, you don't so much drown as decompose. Um, it was just that polluted. OK, so just in case you think that this is a history lesson and that these things don't exist today, let's talk about some of the absurdity today. Today, in our chemical products, consumer products, electronic products, we are using chemicals that are capable of disrupting uh, endocrine system, reproductive and developmental uh, of, of fetuses to the point where the composition of these chemicals are playing a role as to whether or not, for instance, I will be a grandparent, whether or not my progeny will be able to reproduce. They will influence what the IQ of your children might be. That's absurdity. And we can talk a lot more about that. Right now, if mother's milk were attempted to be sold on the shelves as regular milk, it's too contaminated in many, many countries with the impurities of persistent bioaccumulative and toxic substances. Remember we talked about the body burden in, in all of us um, of these persistent bioaccumulative and toxic substances? They tend to accumulate in, uh, in fat and mother's milk as a uh, depository for that. And many of these products are either directly applied to or meant for children. Uh, we'll talk about things such as bisphenol A in baby bottles and different phthalates and rubber duckies and, and the consequences of those those substances. Today, not in the 80s, not in the 70s, not in the 50s. Talked about pharmaceutical waste. We mentioned that. What about pharmaceuticals in the environment? Not just for manufacturing, but when old pharmaceuticals are thrown away, unused pharmaceuticals, or the ones that are in your body that get excreted. We now have biologically active levels of pharmaceuticals in the environment and in things such as our drinking water. Industrial chemicals in rivers and streams. Um, I have the example here, 70% of the smallmouth bass in the Mississippi River are intersex. That they, because of these endocrine disrupting chemicals, are believed to be changing gender. These are also affecting the Florida panthers. 90% uh, of the uh, Florida panther sperm is abnormal. And in developing countries, 70% of the industrial waste is dumped untreated uh, into uh, the, the water. In 2010, the US generated 30 million tons of plastic waste, and 7% was recovered through recycling. And this is our current uh, energy portfolio. We talk about um, whether it's Fukushima, whether it's the BP oil spill, whether it's uh, coal mining. Uh, we have quite a uh, series of unintended consequences. Somebody tell me what Bhopal is. Why do we care about Bhopal?
methyl isocyanate. Hazardous chemical, ruptured valve or something. People are still hand waving as to exactly uh, what it was. Union Carbide would love to say that it's sabotage. I have no idea. I don't really care. What we should all care about is that when this toxic gas was released, uh, 5,000 were killed immediately. 5,000 people died immediately in their homes. It's estimated that another 18,000 died in the following two weeks, and that thousands more died of uh, diseases related to the, the gas poisoning over time. Think of the worst terrorist tragedy that you can imagine uh, that, that's happened. It doesn't compare to this. Things that we restructure uh, our laws and our society about uh, doesn't compare to this. When you take a look at the potential for accidents like this today, not then, today, the potential for chemical accidents um, that can kill many thousands of people instantly still exist. I'd recommend that everybody take uh, five, ten minutes and go to the, uh, something called the Chemical Safety Board website. It will take you through all of the chemical accidents that are happening today that are under investigation. West Texas, where people, uh, 15 people were, were killed instantly and leveled the town a year ago, uh, and on and on. Uh, my biggest uh, challenge is understanding why everybody isn't uh, up in arms about uh, West Virginia and why that is somehow, to my perspective, being taken far too much in stride. Uh, but the, the point of this, uh, this class, this whole course, is not uh, to, to rail against uh, the bad, but to use the tools of green chemistry to invent a different path and to understand uh, the situation as it is in order to design things so that they're different in the future.